I like that, you know. Make yourself comfortable. <laughs> um, I don't know if you heard, there, there's two stories. The one was in America, and um, Pixie, can I have a sip of your tea? feel nervous this morning and I know when I feel nervous God wants to do something because he's just <laughs> gonna go somewhere that I did not prepare <laughs> um, in, in America there was a story of uh, sorry Gabe just press record did you press oh Nathan free cookies for you after the service <laughs> thanks man And in America, there was a, a couple that got a bakery. And I don't know the details of the story, but I just want to run these two stories by you. And they had a, a gay couple come and they wanted them to bake them a cake for the wedding. And maybe you've heard of this story. And there was a big hoo-ha because they, as believers, refused to bake the cake for them for their gay wedding. I don't know how you feel about that or what your stance is around that. I don't know the details of that story, but it became a, quite a media blowout because this uh, bakery refuses to bake a cake for a gay couple who's going to get married. The other story is, is um, you know, with, with the Australian rugby player, I don't want to mention his name, but you probably know who it is. And he put the tweet, um, to, he quoted a scripture, but he didn't quote the scripture. He put his thoughts on the tweet, and he said, all adulterers, fornicators, and, hom and homosexuals will go to hell. And um, which is a scripture that is quoted. And um, so I want to just touch on some stuff, and, um, and I want to, to encourage and and also challenge you that God has placed us where we are, where we work, for a reason. And we must be careful not to stuff it up. Because I don't know the details, but if it was my bakery, so I, I used to do carpentry and decks. And I always said, listen, if the devil phones me up and he wants me to build him a deck, I'll build him a deck. And I'll do a very good one because I do it because of who I am, not because of who he is. And God has placed us in the workplace so that we can be people of influence. And we must watch out as in being people of influence that the enemy doesn't hijack us out of the place where God has divinely placed us. Because we're trying to prove something. I'm not saying that's the case with, with the bakery place. I'm not saying that's the case with the rugby player. But we've got to be careful that the way we operate is we're wanting to draw people to Jesus and not judge them. Yes, we judge what is right and wrong. But if we are judging to prove our own self-righteousness, we are not going to get very far. In, in, in the book of Daniel, I read through that book. Man, you know, when he talks about the God of mysteries, I serve the God of mysteries. I get like these gooseys that just go, run up and down my spine. And um, so if you want to go into your Bible, um, I know most of you know it off by heart. In Daniel 1, 8 to 9. Okay, I'll, I'll give you a second. Just Pixie um, needs a moment. While you're paging, um, we've got Chris Blackaby here next week, Sunday morning. Chris is awesome. 
I love him to bits. He's landing tomorrow, and I'm going to go and have coffee with him in the week. And, um, but Chris is a th- total mystic, but thoroughly grounded in the Word of God. And that's what I so love about him. No funny stuff. And in Daniel 1, verse 8 and 9, so most of us are aware of Daniel, the stories and the things that happened, the den, the fiery furnace, interpreting the dreams, and then God gives him a dream for the future and the end times, and some of it that's now, some of it's already happened. And um, so in Daniel 1, 8, 9, it says, but Daniel resolved. So when they came to the king's court, him and his three friends, um, They had to adhere to certain protocols and rules, and they were primed to serve in the king's courts, which was now obviously part of when when the Jews were captured by the Babylonians. So they went for the guys who looked handsome. They went for the people that were clever, the princes and all those. They targeted them, said, come here. We're going to train you. We're going to groom you so that you can work and operate in the king's court. So... When they did that, they had to go and sit by the king's table and they had to eat certain foods and wines and obviously foods that were dedicated to gods, etc. And it says, but Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now God had caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel. Um, can I drop this mic? I forgot to put the other one on. It's his fault. There we go. <laughs> it's never the pastor's fault. I mean, really? <laughs> so, firstly, just think about this. Yes, Daniel, he's a believer. He loves the Lord. And yeah, he finds himself in the midst of a very secular an ungodly situation. And he goes to the chief. He doesn't vip himself and say, listen, I am a son of God. I will not drink of that wine. They did drink the wine in any case. I will not eat that food because I will not subject myself. You know, I can almost see this old Baptist with me going a fit. <laughs> But yeah, Daniel comes, and he comes to the chief, and and he says to him, listen, I just want to explain something about us, and I want to ask your permission, if it is okay with you, that we don't want to partake of this, and he said, we will also prove to you that after 10 days, you can come and look at us, and then after we've eaten just the vegetables, we just want to eat vegetables, which is where the Daniel fast has come from, then you can compare us. Because the chief actually couldn't really care flying hoot. He just didn't want to get into trouble with King Neb. Because he was quite a nasty dude. And um, so he said, okay, I'll give you your time. You just eat your vegetables. I'll compare you to the other oaks. Which did happen. And I want to encourage you with this. Let's position ourselves in the workplace. And not try and be self-righteous. Because I'm going to show you now something. Where God has put you there, protect your sphere of influence. It doesn't mean we don't stand up for what is right. But you've got to be spirit-led for when you stand up for what is right. Because otherwise the enemy uses self-righteousness to displace you out of your influence in where God has put you. So in Daniel 1.13, Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food. And treat your servants in accordance with what you see. At the end of the ten days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate at the royal, um, ate the royal food. Then verse 17. To these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. So please note that God who gave Daniel and his friends insight into all kinds of learning and literature, it was not the Bible. It was astrology. It was occult books 
And it was all the literature that that culture was using. So, of course, Daniel knew the Torah. But they, that stuff that they were learning, it wasn't Christian stuff. Why? Because God was busy equipping him and positioning him for a place where he wants him to have influence. Listen, people, we can't all be managers at Kum Books. <laughs> I know that disappoints you. <laughs> But God wants to put you in the middle of the hell hole. Because those are the people that need the light and the mysteries that God has planted in your spirit to change them. So what, what, what? We're going to hear lots of yeses today. And then I'm going to get phone calls in a week. God put me in the hell hole and it is your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's Pink's his fault. <laughs> Daniel 1, 19 to 20. The king talked with them and he found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. So they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in the whole kingdom. So listen, you're the man. If, yes, in Jesus. If you come with, and you faced with those people who were, man, they were, I mean, if they could take a stick and it turns into a snake, you must know they were connected with the demonic, that is, but they were connected nonetheless. So then the king comes and he has a dream. The king summoned the magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers to tell him what he had dreamed. And when they came in and stood before the king, the king replied to the astrologers, this is what I have firmly decided. So he told them the dream, etc. And then he said to them, if you do not tell me, oh, oh no, sorry, he didn't tell them the dream. Just reversing that. He didn't tell them the dream. He had them standing in front there. And then he says, this is what I decided. If you do not tell me what my dream was and interpret it, I will have you cut into pieces and your houses turned into piles of rubble. But if you tell me the dream and explain it, you will receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. So tell me the dream and interpret it for me. Now listen, there's the thing of being put on hot coals. I, I, they must be hopping bubbles. Up, 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 up. What are we going to conjure up now? You must know that you as a believer, if you serve the God of mysteries, you have insight to knowledge, understanding, and revelation that no one outside of Christ can ever have access to. If you remember, we spoke about the angelic realm and the ophanim with the eyes, and the eyes are revelation and insight. It is the fountain, also represents a fountain, and if there's a fountain, it digs deep from underground and brings to the top. So in other words, we as believers, we engage the angelic realm of the ophanim, and we allow the Holy Spirit to dig from underneath the throne room to get that revelation to be released here on earth. So know that God will put you in situations that will force you into the miraculous. If we all sit cushy at home and everything just goes well, we're not going to see the miracles that God is wanting to do in and through us. If we are so mystical... And if we surf on the revelations and things that God gives us, He gives it so that we can reach a world that is dying and needs Jesus. It is one thing to go fly the planets and to see the scenery in the spirit realm, which is wonderful. 
But God wants to take that so that His wisdom and revelation can be expressed through you so that His name can be glorified in the situation. Whether you work for Alexander Forbes or for Standard Bank or for British Telecoms or for Pete the Plumber or for Yanni the Electrician or whatever company or wherever, God is wanting to be Bring his revelation and insight through you that will change and shift the atmosphere in that situation radically. You must know that your working circumstances are most likely probably going to become more difficult. Why? Because God is wanting to see his sons and daughters rise in the midst of situations that resemble hell and release the supernatural realm of the heavens over it. You are the gateway of heaven. Wherever you walk, heaven is. Whenever you open up your spirit, you release from the gateways of heaven into that situation. Wherever I walk, the demons tremble. Not because of who I am, but because of who Jesus is within me. I don't care if I walk in a satanic coven. I don't care if I walk past a shaman or a... What's the, those oaks who throw the bones? Sangormas. I don't really give a rat's toenails. He does. Because when you walk in there, all he sees is Jesus shining through you. And Daniel knew that. Daniel knew the God that he served was alive in him. That wherever he was, God was shining through him. He didn't have to go and prove himself by standing. Because you know, we like to do that. We like to stand up for the truth and defend God. You know, I want to tell you, God doesn't need your defense. He created heaven and earth from the beginning, which means he's perfectly in control. What he does want you to do is to submit to the call and the scroll that he wrote for your life. To engage with it. It doesn't mean what he's put you in charge of. Let me go back here. So in Daniel 2.11... What the king asks is too difficult. No one can reveal it to the king except the gods. And they do not live among humans. And Daniel goes, ha, 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 I know one. This made the king so angry and furious that he ordered the execution of all the wise men of Babylon. So, so he was ticked off. Yeah, so Arioch, who was now the commander of the king's guard, he went out so that he can go and kill all the wise men of Babylon. And then Daniel went to him and spoke to him. Daniel went to him and he spoke to him with wisdom and tact. Man, if there's something that Christians can sometimes miss in the workplace, is wisdom and tact. Why do we have to be so super spiritual in the workplace? I can tell you why, because we, we lack power. And we lack the sonship. So we want to prove it. But, well, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Well, do you know who I am? I've even had oaks. Do you know who I am? I don't really care. The last time I checked that the road of heaven doesn't run through your backyard. <laughs> I need water. Wisdom and tact. Respect your sphere where God has put you and trust God that he will vindicate you in whatever situation or workplace where you find yourself. So Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and tact and he asked the king's officer, why did the king issue such a harsh degree, decree? And Arioch explained the matter to Daniel. At this, Daniel went into the king and asked for time so that he might interpret the dream for him. So already... Daniel could approach the king because he gained favor through the wisdom and understanding that God gave him. Let me tell you, already Daniel wouldn't have been able to get an audience with the king if he whipped his backside in the beginning and said, I will not drink that wine. I'm not going to drink your stuff because it's uh, dedicated to the idols and, and all that stuff. He was conscious of God having a plan to be executed through him. Don't damage your sphere of influence. Be careful of what you do and say. I'm not saying you be an undercover agent. 
No, we love Jesus and we're not ashamed of it. But there's a, there's a time to stand up for something and there's a time to use a situation for the good of God. If, if that couple came to me to bake the cake, I don't know, you know. I'd see a ministry opportunity rather than prove myself that I'm a Christian. Yeah, I have a couple who's lost. They need Jesus. They came to me and asked me to bake them a cake. Yeah, God comes and he says, I am opening a door for you into these people's lives. Use it well. I'm not going to bake a cake for you because your sexuality doesn't agree with the Bible. That's true. But God brings those people across our path so we can influence them, not chase them away. Daniel 2.18, he urged them to plead for mercy from God of heaven concerning this mystery so that he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel. You know, the, the Bible, when it talks about a mystery, when you do research in mystery, a mystery is only something that God can reveal because it comes from revelation. You cannot get a mystery from anything else but from the throne room of God through which you are a gate. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven and said, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons, and we're going to do a prayer regarding that soon. He deposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me. What we ask of you, you have made known to us the dream of the king. If you think of that scripture in, in 1 Corinthians 2, 7, it says, We declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. So in other words, through Jesus, God has implanted in you the wisdom of the throne room to be manifested in your situation. If you just think about that, we are gods. I know that phrase offends people, but if you are a son of God, so we are not God. But if we are the sons of God, we have the mind of Christ, we have his wisdom, man, we should be walking on water. Then you're going to see people being offended by levitation because the supernatural overtakes the natural. God is wanting to unfold that wisdom so that he can transform the situation where he has put you in. In, um, in Daniel 2.27, it says, Then Daniel replied to the king. He said, No wise man, enchanter, magician, or diviner can explain to the king the mystery is asked about. But... <laughs> There is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. He has shown King Neb what will happen in days to come. Your dream and the visions that pass through your mind as you were lying in a bed are these. And then Daniel goes and he explains. Now you must know that must, old King Neb must have been like blowing bubbles with his... <sighs> Yeah, here's Daniel. He did not tell anybody about that dream. And Daniel, word for word, tells him what he dreamt. And he told him what the interpretation of that dream is. Talk about being positioned for influence. If you look, I went to go, I, li I like to dissect words because the Hebrew words are gateways of the spirit realm. Jesus is the word. So I think he's got... Kim, uh, Hebrew words tattooed all over him. He is the Hebrew words. <laughs> Reveal. If God reveals, it, it is the Hebrew word galah. And guess what it starts with? A gimel. Yeehaw! What is the gimel? It's the camel that comes from heaven with supplies. 
And God says he reveals it through you. We engage that gimel. We engage that camel that is loaded with the supplies of provision, of revelation, of wisdom to be dispersed within your sphere of influence. Protect your sphere of influence. Ask God first before you just say stuff. In Amos, he forms the mountains who creates the wind. He who reveals his thoughts to mankind. God placed you where you are at so that you can reveal heaven here on earth. God placed you where you're at because he anointed you for the gate that is to be opened for a release into that place. I I want this penny to drop with you because we're so in danger of, of Christians wanting to bail out in the workplace. There's no one more in the ministry here than you. You know, they always look at the pastors and evangelists or whatever. You are the guys that come across those who are Satanists or who are not saved or anything like that. You are more in the ministry actually than what I am. You are in that field that is ripe where people need the love of Jesus. My job is to teach so that you can execute that. In Luke 8. Verse 9, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you. So don't be surprised if God will put you in a situation that is going to force you to tap into those secrets. That God wants to release the answer through you. Or he wants to release the solution through you so that he can be glorified, his kingdom can be glorified and released within your sphere of influence. God put you there where you are because there are people that need Jesus. Please don't stuff it up by being upset if you have to bake a cake for a homosexual couple. Use the cake as a door to speak and minister to them. Maybe we could have used that opportunity to prophesy over them. Maybe we could have used that opportunity to say, listen, I just want you to know, we are Christians. We believe in Jesus and we love Jesus. We do not agree with homosexual marriage, but we are baking this cake and we are releasing the kingdom of God over you so that you can experience his love, that you can experience his blessing and allow him to penetrate your spirit and you can just go more. Use it as a door, not as a vault to close. (laughs) I love that, Sharon. (laughs) Reveals deep things. Deep, the Hebrew word for deep, amek. It starts with an ayin, and it ends with an aleph. So for those of you who don't know Hebrew, the ayin is the eye, and it sees the revelation. It gets the revelation, it releases revelation and insight into the deep things of God. In Job, Job 11, he said, can you fathom the mysteries of God? Can you probe the limits of the Almighty? They are higher than the heavens above. What can you do? They are deeper than the depths below. What can you know? And then in verse 22, Job 12, he reveals the deep things of darkness and brings it all out into the light. In Thessalonians 5 verse 5, you are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong in night in darkness. God has given us the access to that wisdom and knowledge and insight. If you remember Justin Abram, he was speaking of if there's anybody that has to come up with new inventions, etc., it's the Christians. Because they are the ones who've got the insight, can tap into the knowledge of God and reveal the new creations of what God is busy doing. The purpose of a mystery is to bring a convergence between heaven and earth. 
so that the natural will take on the characteristics of the supernatural and henceforth become supernatural. The purpose of a mystery is to bring a convergence between heaven and earth. God put you where he put you because he is releasing heaven into that situation. So when you go back to work on Monday, you walk into that office and then you can just say to yourself, I understand now why I am here. Because God is wanting to release the kingdom in this place. I am the gate. Wherever you walk, the presence of Jesus just emanates and flows through you. So Daniel interpreted this amazing dream and he told King Neb what the dream was. So in Daniel 2.47, the king said to Daniel, Surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries. You will only know that if he saw it demonstrated. See the mystery there. King Neb wouldn't have known that unless Daniel demonstrated it. God put you where you are because he is wanting to just demonstrate the kingdom of heaven in, Mux, in, the Mux, in the midst of your situation and circumstances. Then the king placed Daniel in a high position, lavished him many gifts on him. He made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and placed him in charge of all its wise Men, now I like this one. This, this is such a good one. Let's just go, if, if you look at the scripture um, further down, it gives you who the wise men were. It was the astrologers, the enchanters, the magicians. So a magician and an enchanter was a sorcerer. So it was someone who by way of spells and divination would call forth demonic spirits to produce unnatural effects in circumstances. A diviner is someone who harnesses hidden knowledge and power through demonic entities. An astrologer, someone who interprets the stars for physical influence. <laughs> so, God takes Daniel and he puts him in charge of the wise men. Let me rephrase that. God promotes Daniel and he puts him in charge of the occult division. Come on! Imagine again, Daniel goes, Oh, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I will not be in charge of such atrocities. Who do you think you are? Come on, man, throw that garbage in the bin. Go stand in the midst of the hellhole and radiate the radiance of Jesus. God will promote you in the midst of the hellhole so that the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom can be revealed. Because he will show you that mystery. And when he puts you in a situation where you are forced to speak it out, from the guy who was the most vile unbeliever, he promotes you. And you will become the envy of the people around you when you start seeing God's wisdom, revelation, and knowledge being manifested in and through you. If you're an artist, God is wanting to show that art from the throne room in and through you. You can be working for a company as a graphic designer. God gives you insight what to bring forth. You might be a numbers person, very left brain. We still love you. God is one. <laughs> you see, my wife is very left brain. <laughs> and Al. <laughs> and um, so, <laughs> so we like so opposites. I'm very right brained. Um, so, yes. God puts him as in charge of the occult division. God is going to put you in places that is going to offend your religious spirit. 
I know we say, I don't have a religious spirit. Yeah, until God puts you there, then it's going to test you. Then it's going to test you. But God is starting to change things because he wants his believers to bring the light into this world. So be prepared that God is going to shift and change things where you are going to be far more effective in releasing the kingdom of God. Yes, he can do it at Kumbuks as well, but there's only one manager at Kumbuks. <laughs> I want to end off with this piece, and I want to do a, a prayer. In Daniel 3, verse 20, um, when King Neb built an idol, a fairly big one, and he commanded the people that they must come, they must worship, they must bow down at this thing. And um, Daniel's friends said, well, we can't do that. You know, there's a time when you don't bow to a religious spirit, and then there's a time when you don't bow to an idol. Yeah, they had to stand up for what they believe. And they were supposed to bow down and worship this idol. They said, sorry, dude, we ain't going to do that. You know, it says, the God I serve will save us. And then they said, even if he doesn't save us, we will still not worship your idol. Which is actually, if you think about it, if he doesn't save you, you're going to burn in the furnace and you're going to worship the idol in any case, you know. But we get what he was saying, you know. Whether God is going to save me or not, my devotion is to him. So they threw them into the blazing fire. And in verse 25, it says, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. So a couple of scriptures before that, it describes that they bound them up. You know, they tied their hands together. And then they put them into the fiery furnace. And nothing happened to them in that fiery furnace except for that thing that bound their hands together was burnt off. And sometimes God will put you in the fiery furnace, be it wherever that is in your family or at workplace, so that he can free you from the very thing that is holding you back. God is not interested in a manager job at Kum Books. He wants to make you the head of the occult division so that you can release heaven over hell. Otherwise, we act like servants, not like sons. See, Daniel was a son. He knew his position in Christ. He knew that he was a son of God. He wasn't a servant. He knew as a son that I don't have to go and prove myself because I know my relationship with Jesus or with Yahweh. We need to get to that place to stop proving to people that we are Christians and rather become gates to release the wisdom, the power, the understanding within our circumstances and shift the atmosphere so that heaven is released where God has put you. So, uh, and I just have to mention this, you know, because we are busy with the angelic. We'll do our next one in two weeks' time. That later, later on, it is interesting the progression of Daniel. First, God let Daniel... Um, interpret the dream, see the vision, interpret the dream. Then Daniel got a dream, but he didn't know the interpretation. And at the end, Daniel got a dream and the interpretation. And there was a slow progression of Daniel's faithfulness of engaging the kingdom of God that just um, enabled him to operate in a total different realm in the kingdom. So, for you, I don't know what is binding you or what is holding you back. Maybe you feel like there's things that are not being released. I want to just speak this in, um, in Daniel 7.25. Um, it says, speaking about the Antichrist, but it's the spirit of the Antichrist. He will speak against the Most High and oppress his holy people and try to change the set times and laws. The enemy is trying to disrupt your scroll. 
The enemy is trying to disrupt your destiny. The enemy is trying to bring stumbling blocks so that you can't fulfill the call where God has placed you. In, in, in Daniel 2.21, in then it says, He changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and raises up others. So I don't know for who of you are here that you feel like my arms are, I feel like my arms are bound. Or I feel like the enemy is interfering with my scroll, my destiny that God has given me. I feel that the enemy has altered my timelines. Things should have happened and they're not happening. Or things are being held back. We serve the God that changes times and destinies. We serve the God that will take that person who is giving you hell at work to remove him and put someone else in place. If you feel, because I felt that the Lord is wanting to burn uh, bondages away. Those things that are binding you. Those things that you feel like you're not getting release in the kingdom. Those things that you feel that there's blessings being held back. And that doesn't just mean money. It can mean um, your, your relationship with the Lord. Maybe you're in a place and you feel, I don't want to read the Bible. I don't want to pray. Anything like that. Uh, maybe your, your provisions are being stuck. Maybe you're struggling to get work. Maybe you feel like something should have happened to you years ago already, but it's just not being released because you just feel like you're bound up and the enemy is not allowing you to fulfill what God is wanting to do in and through you. I want you to stand if that is you. Okay, you can close your eyes. Father, we just want to come before you. And Lord, as believers, we acknowledge that we serve the God of mysteries. We serve the God who deposes kings, reinstates new ones, reinstates new rulers. Lord, I want to... Lift my hands as king, priest, and prophet over the people here this morning. Lord, that you have divinely placed us in the workplace to release heaven into that workplace. Lord, we want to come and anything that is binding us. Lord, as we step into the fire of your glory. We ask that those things that are binding our wrists and hands together will burn off right now. Any negative word and curse that has been spoken over you, every jealous word that has had an effect on these things that are bound around your wrists and hands, anything that has interfered with the timing and the release of your destiny, anything that has interfered with the release of finances or the selling of properties, anything that has interfered with the release of health and wholeness, anything that has been preventing the release of jobs and contracts, Lord, that those Bondages are broken off and burnt off in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that your fiery furnace of your glory will promote us. And I speak freedom over everybody here. That that which has bound you is loose. It is burnt off in Jesus' name. Lord, and we ask that your wind of refreshing will blow over everybody here as they receive healing. I want you to see that wind blowing over you. Lord, release your gimel, the camels from heaven, to release the supplies and the provision and the prosperity over them. Lord, for those who are looking for jobs, that jobs will be released. Lord, we ask that a reinstatement of our scroll and destiny And anything that was lost is brought back a hundredfold 
and faster in Jesus' name. And anything that the enemy has stole and the times that he have, has altered is restored. And everything that was lost is reinstated into our lives, into our families, into our personal lives, into our spiritual lives, into our job situations in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray over everybody here a realignment in their spirit, in their destiny, Lord, for the influence that will be released, the kingdom of heaven that will be released through their gates in their circumstances, that the kingdom will be established within their workplace, within their sphere of influence. Lord, we pray for promotion just like Daniel. Lord, that you will put us in charge where we can change the, the corporate environment where we can change the job situation. Lord, where we can change the atmospheres that you put us in. To release the kingdom of heaven in our circumstances. Lord, we want to come and we engage with your spirit of wisdom and understanding. Lord, when Daniel acted in wisdom and tact, Lord that we can preserve our sphere of influence, but yet have profound impact. Lord, give us wisdom in the way we must operate in the workplace, Lord, that we will be effective kingdom agents. We just release it, Lord. I want you, there you are, where you are. I just want you to feel how the Lord is just lifting a load off your shoulders. If you've been anxious, nervous, I sense there's some people here who have been struggling with depression, we just release that off your shoulders in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask that you will reveal the deep and the mysteries of your kingdom within each person here. Lord, that you will lift us up, that your name will be glorified. I speak the peace of the Lord, the peace that surpasses all understanding. Will guard your heart, your mind in Jesus' name. I pray wherever you place your foot, the kingdom of God will be manifested. I pray for a radical change in your health circumstances. I pray for a radical change in your financial circumstances. I pray for a radical change in your job situation. And I release promotion from the kingdom of God. We release jobs from the kingdom of God. We release finances from the kingdom of God. We release health from the kingdom of God. We receive it, Lord. Holy Spirit, we ask that you will seal that in our spirit and that the fruits of it will manifest in Jesus' name. Amen.